I make these tap handles for a brewery and today I've made over 2,000 of them. So the process of me making them has gotten a lot shorter just because I've cut out certain steps that I don't need and I've found more efficient ways to make them. There are two other videos on my channel that I will link below if you want to see more of the process of me making this. So first off is the lumber. I used to go down to the lumber yard and pick out all the boards myself. There's no sense in me doing that because it's all getting cut up into um, you know, one foot long pieces about two and a half inches wide. So now I call the lumber yard, tell them exactly how much lumber I need and the next day they deliver right to my shop. Saves me a few hours. Another thing with the lumber is I learned to ask for the widest boards possible. They don't charge anything extra for wider boards and it does save me a lot of handling time picking up each piece and sending it through the table saw. So here I'm just ripping all of the boards down to my template width. Uh, fairly simple. I do not joint one edge. I find that uh, the first edge on the board is straight enough and I could run it through. It's all going to get turned around anyways. If the board is out of whack, I will go to the joiner, but it's an extra step and it takes time. So I've cut it out. Another thing I've done over the years is I will set an actual timer for each step. That way I know how long each step takes me to do. Sometimes when you get an order for, you know, say 200 tap handles, it's a daunting task. And I find myself doing other things just because I'm putting it off. But with the timer, I know, okay, I can rip these boards. It'll take 35 minutes for me to rip them. And then I'm on to the next step. Next step is cutting all of the long boards down into their final lengths. I do this with a chop saw and a stop block that I set up. A thing I make sure to do when I get the lumber and break it down is make sure that those cuts I'm making to break down the lumber are square. If they are square, I can take my board off the table saw and run it right up to my stop block and make a cut. I don't have to make an initial cut to get the board square. After the blanks are all cut to length, I need to mark the top, middle, and bottom of the blank. That way I know where to turn it when I get to that step. But this is one of those things that just took to, used to take way too long to do. It took me about two hours to mark all these pieces. I then made a template that you see there on the left and I would use that to mark all my sight lines. I wouldn't have to use a square. Now I just use this template right here to draw the curve of the piece that I'll use on the bandsaw and I don't draw the top, middle, and bottom sight lines on the piece. I use a template that I attach to the lathe to see those lines. Next we are on to the bandsaw. I use a 3 16 inch blade for this. Allows me to make that turn fairly easily. I used to do this with a router in the previous template to get that surface all smooth, but just being comfortable using a bandsaw has allowed me to get all of the surface cut out nice and cleanly and straight. After all the blanks are cut out on the bandsaw, it's over to the table saw. I tilt the blade to 45 degrees, I set up a sacrificial fence and I run all of the pieces through. I actually double stick tape that sacrificial fence to the top of the table saw just to make sure it doesn't move around. This step I didn't use to do, but it saves me a lot of time in the actual turning of the tap handle. And it saves a lot of cleanup time because there's less dust on the ground because I'm cutting off those actual pieces. To mark the centers of each blank, I made this little jig that has a screw coming up. It pokes a little hole on the bottom and lets me put it on the lathe so it's nice and centered. Now we're on to the fun part. I turn up the lathe as fast as it'll go because there is that section in the middle where half of the wood is not there. So first off, I start with marking the top, the middle, and the bottom. I use the template that is clamped to the lathe in front of me and I use a set of calipers to mark the bottom uh, dimension that I need and then it's on to surfacing and turning the actual tap handle. So I just use a roughing gouge. I used to use a, a bunch of different tools but if you can learn how to use one tool really really well you don't need to pick up other tools, you don't need to sharpen other tools. So it's allowed me to save a lot of time and 
my skills with this tool are really, really good now. So it's just a matter of smoothing, getting a nice curve. I've done so many of these that I know the actual curve that I need. So I don't need an actual, a template to get that curve right. It's just a matter of getting it nice and smooth, shaping the whole thing. Once I get the bottom part shaped, I'll move on to the top section. For sanding, I use a piece of plywood that I 3M adhesive regular sandpaper onto. One side has 100 grit sandpaper, the other side has 150 grit sandpaper, and then I will follow up with an orbital sander that has 220 grit sandpaper on it. Once the tap handles are all turned, it's time to take them over to the drill press where I drill four holes for a plate that will later be put on the front. That way you can identify what type of beer it is. Now I'm back over at the table saw where I set up my sliding uh, miter gauge at 45 degrees with a stop block and I cut off the top of the tap handle and then rip off the bottom of it. And now I have a tap handle that just needs the top sanded and some finish put on it. <laughs> 